have you experienced like existential dread in Vision Pro? Yes, yes, yes. I have. Yes. That is strange. Uh, yes, it happened in in Genius Bar as well. Uh, the first episode where we did Vis- where we used Vision Pro, I went on the moon and turned it to mm. nighttime. And I had that I mean, again, I don't want to compare my experience to an actual astronaut that's been on the moon. Right, right. But I got the feeling of like how the hell am I going to get home? <laughs> like my heart sank like that same feeling of I feel so far away from where I'm supposed to be and it was so convincing especially at nighttime it's so eerie when you're in the water you're like in an in like an ocean there's no boat you're just floating okay. in the dark with the night sky full yeah, of stars that's not and I'm insane. like looking around I'm like okay I know I'm in my house but I feel like yes. I'm in like immediate I, danger I have chills right now just- I hope you appreciate this I sir. usually I try because, I try to listen for you, and for, for you only, or for, for very, very few people in this world, um, this past week, I have taken off my Apple Vision Pro headset in order how, to congregate you, with you here today. How do you how do you feel seeing the real world? Uh, you know, I reality is not all it's cracked up to be now that I'm experiencing back into it. Um, you, mixed to, reality is more. If you my try thing. to pinch me, we're gonna have issues. We're not, we're not, we're not in the same room, fortunately. <laughs> That's where the world is going. Um, listen, before we jump in, though, we have, uh, we have a guest. We don't have our guest. This is not Joe You're up right. the street. We have, <laughs> thank you for correcting me. We have, come on, the guest. Better. The guest. Better. That's what the I want to hear. <laughs> we have someone who, man, I'm, I'm, I'm really going to enjoy this episode because, you know, John, sometimes, both John, sometimes you say things and people don't agree with you when you say them. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. When you say them out of experience. It's true. And later when they experience it, they come around. And you don't want to be the guy that says, I told you so. I'm feeling ambushed currently. It feels like an attack. (laughs) But what I will say is the greatest guests possibly in the history of podcasting, not in our show, but podcasting. I mean, I think that's probably fair. Um, Has Taylor Swift ever been a guest? If not, I definitely get the number one spot. We're trying. We're trying okay. to get I want to know what this man I want to hear the things that this man has to say. <laughs> yes. I'm tuning in. Oh, I'm going to listen back to this episode just to hear just to hear <laughs> the answers. There you well, go. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Is, we didn't say your name yet. <laughs> okay. It, it is Mr. John Prosser. How are you Yay, doing? Yay, thank you for having me again. What time is this? How many times have I been on here? Doesn't matter. Good question. Every time is the best time. That's right. It doesn't matter. I feel like You're this right. is like four. I think it's either four or five. I've got to be the leading guest, other than like maybe Quinn, but he doesn't get his video feeds right ever. So I think I, I think I get that spot by default. You might get your yeah. five timers jacket uh, here soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jacket. Walking jacket. That's okay. Right. Let's just schedule that for right now, so I have something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey. yeah, yeah. You texted me like last month before Vision Pro was out yeah. and set this up. I feel like this was this is all going according to your plan. You're like, oh, well, let me wait two weeks before or after Vision Pro comes out, and we'll schedule them for that time. And I was like, sure, yeah, I'll come on the show, and I'll talk about how not great Vision Pro is. Uh, and now we're here yes. after having Vision Pro for, what, two weeks now? What? No, one week. One week. One week. Over a week. And, oh, yeah, week, whoa. week and a half. Ten days. Ten days. Time, time moves faster in the metaverse, I think. And you are right, because I didn't want to have you... The Monday after, I didn't want to have you after three. I days. know you're too smart, and no, I hate no, 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 no. <laughs> you're gonna get this man a week and a half in. Uh-huh. Um, but we also have John Fraser here as well, who you also know, here. similar. I think John has some very, he has some very uh, appropriate concern, criticisms even. And I'm also curious to see how things have grown for yeah. him. So I'm, I'm just all in on this episode. For me, let me just go first, real quick. I have been it. almost living in this thing. Um, he's not again, even joking. Every time I text this man, he's texting from Vision Pro. I'm in Vision Pro. I, I'm so fast at touch typing in there now. Um, now I feel like you shouldn't say that out loud, Andrew. <laughs> like that's not one of those things you're proud of. I'm just saying, like I, I'm used to it. Um, now, I, I, there is a caveat here. I think there, there's a, a very important caveat when it comes to Vision Pro. I live alone. I don't have family all around me, children running around. So that's different. Yet. I think the experience, it allows me to use it more without feeling like I'm either neglecting people or 
just awkwardly having others so let in me the ask room you and what's your best use case of vision pro with nobody around in the house and the curtains pulled <laughs> and the curtains pulled <laughs> what's what's your why do you why do you love vision pro so much andrew well, well, it, was great, so it was great being with you guys yeah. this week i gotta go yeah. time is why don't, you, why don't you share it with the audience why you love vision pro so much <laughs> listen I go to work in Vision Pro. I edit videos. That just sounds like a mistake. I leave the room. Oh, man. I go to the living room, and I'm like, you know what? Let me pull up YouTube. Let me, while I'm YouTube, and let me have my messages over here on the right-hand side. Let me FaceTime somebody. Like, it's hard for me to find a use case that, and I, this actually surprises me. It's hard for me to find a use case of things I would do that I cannot do in Vision Pro with the exception of posting to things like, you know, uploading to YouTube, uploading to Instagram, uploading to take those kinds of things. It's like, you've got to take it off and get, get with the real world back on your phone. But besides that, there's so many things that you can do. And I feel like I've come to almost, I'm going to call it a conclusion or just like a realization, uh -huh. a realization. I think a lot of times people like me, people like John, both the Johns here, Prosser and Ranger, even when we come from different mindsets of approaches and different conclusions, yeah. I think the three of us, almost in particular, have a really good knack for seeing past like the tech reviewer's view of something and instead trying to see the average person on the outside, how they might receive something. Mm -hmm. But I feel, I would say Quinn also is good at this. Yeah. But absolutely. I feel a lot of people miss that mark this time. I feel a lot of the complaints that people mm. have in the <laughs> tech sphere, they'll say things like the pass through isn't that great. And therefore, you know, the average person is not going to like it. Yeah, but, but they I label like... the pass through not great because they understand cameras and yeah. screens. They can see the traits of cameras and screens where normal people. So, so yeah, I, I what I really think is happening is a lot of people who do what we do genuinely want to, out of concern for the average consumer, focus on things they would care about. But I think we're forgetting that at least for this product in particular. I really think product is more about how it makes you feel and less about what it does. Mm, mm -hmm. Can I yeah. can I can I jump in there just real fast on a on a non Please. sequitur? You can always think, jump in. I think us in this industry trying to understand what the regular consumer wants is like when you see Kim Kardashian try to talk about like regular people you know can't afford a fifty thousand dollar glass of uh, champagne. <laughs> I don't think we have any idea <laughs> regular what regular people, people want. And regular consumers are. In all fairness. And I'm a, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let John talk for a second, but can I just share my vision pro thought? I can sum it up in the in I think a simple few sentences. Okay, it's the best iPad Apple's ever. Apple became up the thing with the iPad. You're one of those people. Apple, huh? Apple positioned it as it's a computer, you can work from it, and you can. The best thing the Vision Pro did for me was reviewing content, viewing stuff. Vision Pro is absolutely incredible experience. Working inside of it was was cumbersome for me. Editing was cumbersome for me. The technology is incredible, and I think it's wonderful how it works. And clearly, the future is there. But doing anything outside of like FaceTime calls or consuming content became just more difficult than it was. I had to keep changing what I was doing for Vision Pro, and I just wanted to be able to work to get my work. It's sort of how I've been able to. Interesting. Okay, that sounds like. The most old man approach you. Could oh, hundred percent. You can see I was yelling. I was I was yelling at a cloud earlier. Uh, before <laughs> with the Vision Pro. Yeah, before wrong. when you had full keyboards on phones, did you miss T nine texting too? I, I, <laughs> listen, I think there's I think there's there's new there's new for adding value and there's new for new shit. Mm -hmm. And when you hear the reports that a lot of Apple engineers and you can chime in on this if it's wrong, thought Vision Pro wasn't ready. I think you can see where it is. Mm. And I will give the caveat, or how Andrew said it, caveat. Um, until there's a killer app or a killer feature for it, something I can only do in Vision Pro. When Spike, we talked about this last week, when sports, when I can watch the Super Bowl on the 50 yard line, I'm in. I'm 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah. When that Disney demonstration they showed with basketball going on, where you can like rewind and see the stats happening, I'm in. I just don't have a killer use case for me yet. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what. All, already, like this early on, 
if someone wants to FaceTime, I will always pick Vision Pro. Like it is instantly the best way to FaceTime, I think. Personas could put could get a little better. Like I don't and know if you've will. seen Yeah, I don't know if you've seen Quinn's persona in the newest beta. I did, yeah. I don't have the balls to download the beta on my Vision Pro, uh, but he does, and his persona looks like at least double as good as they did on launch. Looks for the very first Harry Potter movie, what is it, Chamber of Secrets? Remember that movie? Yeah, uh, do you ever sounds right? Do you see it? Yeah. Remember when the, I just don't there's so many I don't know what order they're do in. Do you remember the professor like unwrapped his head and there was like little Voldemort <laughs> head in the back? Uh that's what all the Vision Pro personas <laughs> look like to me. Like you know, like when you turn your head, it looks so like <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I feel like uh, even even on the tech reviewer side, though, there's like, hmm. like, OK, technically, I get it. You can. Especially people like us, we can identify the traits and see that we're yeah. looking through cameras and screens. There's just certain yeah. things that we are trained to see that most people are not or would not care to know to see. Sure. Uh, but even the tech people, I think, don't understand cameras and screens the way they think they do. Probably fair. So, like, a lot of the traits that, okay, one of the biggest traits that people are talking about is, like, oh, you can see motion blur. I don't, from, at least from my experience, I could be the one who's wrong here. I might be talking out of turn, but I don't see motion blur. I see ghosting from a rendered stabilized footage so if it and if that's the case that is not a hardware issue that is that that's them trying to and i could see them doing that to try to avoid like uh motion sickness while you're in there yeah because on video footage and stuff there's no ghosting there's no motion blur it's something that you see in lower light with envision pro itself and that to me feels like software stabilization and ghosting due to the software stabilization which means that that is not hardware and that could that can be fixed that can be adjusted but it's just one of those things where people automatically have chalked it up to uh the displays being bad or sorry the cameras being bad in low light when that that might be the case but i also see that being camera people display people making assumptions that they don't fully understand because it doesn't look like motion blur to me it looks like i didn't stabilize i didn't see much motion blur either in all fairness one thing that i did see and i talked to other people with the same thing in low light i kept seeing something in the bottom corners that looked like it it was smudged and i yeah did you see that too yeah well especially have you ever like tried to watch content in a low light environment yeah the light is just refracting off of like the the curvature of the lenses and stuff, and it's it looks like someone just poured bacon grease on I, and like tried to clean. I, mean, I it sat off. there like rubbing. I'm like, what am I? Like, what am I doing? Yeah. It's like, am I putting my gross hands on it? Um, yeah, I just couldn't. I couldn't. My brain instantly was like, oh, this is your fault somehow. They definitely didn't ship a product where it looks like it's all smudgy in low light. It's that de you definitely have some gross stuff on it. But no matter how much you clean it, it's just like that i didn't i didn't have that motion blur issue either maybe i just i don't know enough to even notice it content looks looked fine completely fine the quality mm -hmm. of those displays is unbelievable <laughs> it's insane like, and i'm a realist with apple pro or maybe I'm, I'm maybe i fall more on the negative side i don't know but those displays are unbelievable yeah like if there's one thing apple hit out of the park those displays are so good. And maybe the cameras look shitty because those displays are so incredible. Yeah. Um Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, have you seen have you seen uh photos and video taken from the cameras on Vision yeah, Pro? Like I, it's I, not great. I, I took a bunch of sort of that spatial stuff. Um the spatial video looks better when you take it from the camera than I thought yes, versus the yes. phone. Yes. Yes, I'm glad we agree. Which is weird. Sam Sam on on our first episode with Vision Pro. That's one of the first things he mentioned was that spatial video was overhyped. It's not at all what Apple told you it was going to be. And then I eventually asked him, like, okay, well, did you record the spatial video from your phone or from Vision Pro? Of course, it was from his phone. I And I just have anecdotal evidence for this, but I am with you. Vision Pro recording spatial video does much better 
Way better. than just recording on your phone. I think it, and it's probably because of all the spatial awareness tied into the hardware on Vision Pro, where on your phone it's just kind of using those two lenses and trying to create a parallax effect. But like it is way more convincing if you record spatial video with Vision Pro. The only downside is you got to be wearing Vision Pro to record yeah. those memories. And I don't know, like for you and your kids. If you're recording or trying to capture moments with your kids, I'm sure from your end, 10 years down the line, it's going to be really cool to watch Vision Pro spatial video. But like, are you really going to be at your kids' birthday parties with oh, Vision Pro on? It took me way out of it. We, like when I tried to record them with it, oh, they would just stare. Like we took the kids to like a, <laughs> kind of like a little fair yesterday. And I recorded a bunch of video and spatial uh -huh. from the phone. And I played it back. It looks fine. I think I, like an idiot, expected it to almost look like 360 video. Like you can go back in time and look mm. around at that moment. Yeah, like that, that's not what it is. No, um, and that that was surprising. I guess I should have realized. Obviously, it's not going to be a three sixty video. I can't see behind me when the camera's facing forward. Um, but I thought that was oversold. Everybody's talking about Gen three and four Vision Pro, right? You have to get through. Yeah, can't stand it. You have to get through one and two, and that's it's not fair. It's a product that exists. But I right bought now. one that exists right now. Were you? So it exceeded your expectations, right? It exceeded what you're expecting it to be to do. Uh in some in some areas, I was very uh, I I had my own worries about it, and a lot of those worries have been justified. And then in some other areas, like I didn't expect to want to go into it all the time. Okay. Like uh, I was very worried about, let's say, the three week mark. So. It exceeded my expectations in a lot of ways, but um, the biggest the biggest issue for me is like I really do want to use Vision OS. I think Vision OS is the future, and it really draws me in so much so that when I pick up my phone, it feels dated. Like I feel like I've gone backwards in time. I care much less, and this is my job. I mean, all of our jobs really to care, but I care much less about like iOS 18 and iPhone rumors. Like, it feels like such wasted time. And I get we, we probably have 10 years to go before there's really a conversation of like, okay, are we going to end up spending more time in Vision OS than iOS yeah. eventually? But I am so convinced that Vision OS is the future that it, it feels like talking about iOS and iPhone stuff is wasted time. And. Uh, but the only downside is I got to get in this lunchbox thing that's kind of heavy to to experience Vision OS, and that's that's the that's the only for me that's the only downside. I've even like I'm okay with the battery pack at this point too, which I didn't think I was going to be seeing it. I can't believe Apple shipped something like that, but like in actual use, yeah, I'm cool with the battery. In fact, I'm of the mind that if we're going to have a battery plugged into these things anyway start taking components out of the headset and putting it in the battery so the headset gets to be lighter. That's actually a fair point. Um, do you think that you feel this way because you're still on the honeymoon? It's only been 10 days in. It's still kind of new and wonderful. Do you think it'll sort of normalize after a little while? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I feel like I'm getting close to my normalized thoughts about it because at first I was very skeptical. I, I sure. bought it... I, I didn't, ex okay, I don't want to say I bought it planning to return it because I didn't. Uh, I bought it knowing that I was going to keep it because I should have it for any future updates or OS updates, and I, I want to be able to experience those. But I bought it with the mindset that if I, w if I was just a regular consumer and I didn't need to keep this for my job, I, th I assumed that I would be in the mindset of I, will, I would probably return this after I try it and, and, and get a use for it. I am. I no longer agree with that sentiment. I wouldn't return it, even if I was just a regular person and didn't need to keep this. Uh, I would keep it, and me media is better in it. FaceTime is better in it. Uh, some some form of work is better in it. Like creating thumbnails is v superior in Vision Pro. I was just chilling in my living room one night uh, with a with a MacBook on my lap, using the trackpad and the keyboard. And a like three hundred inch Adobe Photoshop window, with like the color and light from the Photoshop window bouncing off the walls of my house and reflecting off the floor. It looked insane, and you could obviously see more sure. more detail because it's so large. Um, I I kind of love this thing. 
there's I, there's definitely hangups with like how heavy it is, and it feels like like a chore to put it on and wear it. Yeah. There's never a moment where I forget that it's on my face. Uh, but I mean, for I, I and I definitely don't subscribe to the whole thing. Like, well, wait till Gen two or Gen three. That is that is horseshit in my opinion. I'm with you on that. I, this is the one I bought, and with the one I bought, I'm still happy with with this. If only. Because it's a it's a very clear glimpse into the future. I already thought mixed reality was the future, VR and AR were the future, but I can when I'm in this, I can feel the future. I can see the whole roadmap. I can see how we're going to get there, and uh, yeah, I don't want to say Andrew was completely right, but uh, I definitely don't. I'm not as worried about Vision Pro as I as I was or, or initially. Have you experienced like existential dread in Vision Pro? Yes, yes, yes. I have. Yes. That is strange. Uh, yes, it happened in in Genius Bar as well. Uh, the first episode where we did Vis- where we used Vision Pro, I went on the moon and turned it to mm. nighttime. And I had that I mean, again, I don't want to compare my experience to an actual astronaut that's been on the moon. Right, right. But I got the feeling of like how the hell am I going to get home? Like my heart sank <laughs> Like that same feeling of I feel so far away from where I'm supposed to be, and it was so convincing, especially at nighttime. It's so eerie, yep. or like in Yosemite where it's just completely flat land around you, mm-hmm. snowy flat land and complete darkness. Like I'm gonna get eaten by a werewolf or something. Right. No, I was in. Uh, so I was in that app I mentioned where you can like be on a rooftop or be in, mm-hmm. in, in the water. When you're in the water, you're like in an in like an ocean. There's no boat. You're just floating okay. in the dark with the night sky full yeah, of stars that and i'm like insane. looking around i'm like okay i know i'm in my house but i feel like yes. i'm in like immediate I, danger i have chills right now and that's what i'm saying like you have to have experienced this andrew was right you have to experience this because if you haven't you're just hearing us say the words but andrew was saying this these words that i can attach a feeling to now and so i got yeah. chills as he's talking about it the ha- you, i'm assuming of course you've watched the immersive content on apple tv yes, absolutely bro what the hell insane and that's one of those things where like i've experienced that in the quest the quest has a youtube vr app where there's mm-hmm. some like vr content not the same thing at oh. all it's the it, the way they film this immersive content and the displays themselves in here make you feel like so there was a what was I'm just, it was one called adventure it's an immersive short the one where she's on the tightrope or is it the yes one? but okay. she's like on a tightrope amongst a massive canyon that one I did not watch yet bro. Andrew, right after this, you gotta. It opens up when you're like on a helicopter flying in the middle of the canyon. Okay. So you can see the just incredible mass wow. of these mountains. And if you look down, there's a horrible, horrible drop. <laughs> and you are just flying in the middle of it all. And I got that feeling like I wanted to pick my feet up, like try to get them as close into my body as I could. Like it just feels like I'm in danger. Yes. Like that's how convincing it is. It is wild, dude. There's one called Prehistoric Earth where that's you're so just cool. on the earth. Where And the earth doesn't look the same. It looks prehistoric. Like the, the light from the sun is hitting the atmosphere entirely different. You're surrounded by these prehistoric birds, and they don't look like CGI, Mm-mm. and you just feel like you don't belong. Like these things are looking at you. The Alicia Keys one, I was like already so pretty weird. impressed. Yeah. I was already pretty impressed because they put you in the studio with Alicia Keys and like a band, and they're making music and stuff. But there is a point where she lifts her hands off of the piano, grabs the microphone, and looks at you and starts taking a step towards. And you. I backed up like, yeah. oh, <laughs> I'm not ready for this. Like, no one told me Alicia Keys was gonna sing to me. Yep. It's just insane. Yeah. So crazy the way that it puts you like. It's weird. I know I'm in my house. I know. I feel. You know. I know I'm yeah. here. Like one of the other apps I was using, um, it it gives you it lets you see the solar system. So let me see Mars. Let me see, but like above it. So like you're like a spaceship almost looking, but you're just floating oh. in space. You're just floating in space looking Does, down at Mars. What app is that? That app is called. I'm probably gonna do that. I name. think it's called Orbit. Well, you send me a list. I'll send of you a list of all these apps. But um, do me a favor. 
I want to make you do Andrew Edwards' amount of work. Can you put them in the order that you like them the most? Ooh, okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. I've just been downloading apps, man. Like, I really yeah. want to, like, get the most and just, just try that's, things. Developers are the ones insane. that are going to have the, the greatest ideas, so. Yeah. But, like, even the moon, like, that's why I'm very intrigued by the whole space one and looking down at right. Mars. Because on the moon, you can look up. And that is where... I got sick, but not motion sick. I got sick as in, like, my body was convinced I was in nothingness. Like, I'm not grounded anywhere. Right. Like, there's no up, there's no down. But you're on I the looked, moon, though. You were standing on yes, the moon. Yes, now, imagine but I you're floating up. above it. Oh, yeah. I looked okay. up, and I could just see Earth, and I felt so far away. Like, I felt like I could see all of us up there on Earth, and no one knows I'm trapped here on right. the moon. Like, if I could just text Andrew, Sam knows, he could get we're someone in face to come time. get me. Yeah, like if I could just get Andrew, he could send someone up to the moon to save me. Man, that just feels cool. so far away. Does it feel like an un, like a the first refined and unrefined Apple product? I mean, to see things in the main OS that say "coming soon" seems very strange from Apple. I yeah, I can't stand that. I was, I, like I was, <laughs> it's all of our fault for letting them do stuff like that. They've been doing that, you know. Like they'll announce a new iPhone and be like, "This feature's coming in the, tomorrow," but it didn't, or but it didn't next show year. it. I don't know. It didn't show it in the phone. I was like. Right. I was like, what? Yeah. Why is, uh, whatever, some mountain To have the soon. icons there and be like, coming soon, and it shipped like that. It's you. just. I'm trying to tease you. Oh, don't tease me in that the thing weird. I bought. That is, that is strange. You know what? You know what I think? This, this might sound stupid, but I think the reason they're there is to have that perfect app grid. And if two of them were missing, uh, come you on, would have, man. I'm, I, I honestly think it's like a design decision. Not, I'm, not that I'm agreeing <laughs> with it, but. It's it's like the perfect like. Rows, How many right? coming soons are there? I think there's two. No, there's either two or three. <laughs> that's that's too many. Or like the silly ones where it's like change the. You want morning light in your house? Like what? No, actually never. Do I want that? I, why not? It makes no sense. Why would I want that? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. It adds so, nothing. That like that. Those, what it does lights. is it's like an Instagram filter over. It's my not eyes. about. I don't think it's about the light so much as it's. You know how you can get like smart lights that don't change color, but they just have different temperatures of white. And it's like, if it's morning time, you should use this temperature. And then if it's evening, you should use this temperature. It's more for that, but it also gives you like a background sound as well. Yeah, so like, like if wind you go into the stuff, spring like, one, what? you get like some, some, some April rain happening on the outside. Andrew Edwards, I think if one thing I'm excited for, and that's what Vision Pro made me excited for, is Apple Vision. And what that's also, the, the non-pro what mm -hmm. that's and that's what it's listed as on their website too if you go to their website they have a new tab called vision yeah i think that's really exciting and you, and I, th I think that you can see the path right you can very see what vision pro is going to be in two and three get rid of eyesight yeah. get rid of eyesight it's a nice thing to have i don't it, think that's going anywhere say, but that's a feature that, that's a feature for regular anywhere. vision for vision pro i think i'm guessing i don't i, don't I feel like so. they can't at this point like maybe before vision pro came out I think German had said something about the cheaper model not coming with eyesight. I think that would be a mistake. I think they shouldn't give up on eyesight. They can't give up on eyesight. Uh, and it should be on all Apple Vision products. They got to find a way to, to put it How on there. How do they do that? At a, this at, is what at, I think at an affordable they're going to do with like where, What's getting cut to hit a lower price point? I feel like eyesight. LCD front screen, maybe? I don't know. Remember when uh, Sam broke his? Yeah. And he showed that the eyesight is really just a very thin. It's, it's not like a doesn't look like a very expensive part is what I'm trying to say. No, yeah. my guess. This is just a guess is what we see today in Vision Pro is going to go into regular vision. And then the next Vision Pro will have a yeah. better version yeah. of eyesight. That's, well, a, that's just a guess. I'm hearing the next version of or the next headset from Apple is coming Q4 2025. But I don't know if that's Vision Pro 2. Or Apple Vision, like regular. Will we have a regular release cycle for Vision Pro? I mean, you think people dropping thirty five hundred bucks on a headset are probably not that likely to upgrade it. I think so. Think so. I think I think it could be like every other year. I think we'll get an. I think we'll get a new one every year, but they'll they'll swap between Vision Pro and then a regular consumer model. Vision At, Apple Vision price has to drop. The price has to drop for both. Yeah, I mean, I wonder how much they're losing on each headset. And obviously, the first couple thousand bigger I think they're have you seen the costs like if you don't have apple care and you break stuff same yeah. it's it's insane uh i do i do think they're they're losing on it because the component cost doesn't reflect all the r&d costs 
Um, uh, and there's there's fair. economies of scale. And the R and D is probably wild. Probably wild. I don't know how much they're losing or what it is, but I'm curious what those numbers. Uh, and we'll, we'll probably figure it out when they announce the quarterly earnings. Um, more more R and D than any Apple product ever, maybe. Clear, like, clearly, I, I would uh, I would assume not the car. I, there's a lot of things that are oh, surprising God, about car. this, and I'm I'm not like an Apple Pro uh, apologist. I'm not an Andrew here. Um, <laughs> but what's so surprising <laughs> is when you're looking around at the world, you're having the world be rendered in real time. The fact yes. that that's happening to the and I know MetaQuest said something similar. The fact that that's happening with the M2 processor with the R1 is unbelievable. That same processor that's in my computer. That I get so excited when I can open up a bunch of Chrome tabs, can literally yeah. render the world in real time, and it's keeping everything capped at twelve millisecond latency. It's, ins- it's in- insane. insane. The cache on that, how much that must be buffering and storing in memory, must be unbelievable. Even if you yeah. don't like Vision Pro, just to from a hardware and software standpoint, it is technically stupid impressive. Yeah, it is a technical a te- technological marvel yeah. is the best way to put it. And like I don't know if you if you have you seen like on on Genius Bar on accident we found Apple's AR models on their website also load in Vision Pro. But what's insane is like well first of all, if you're in a virtual environment, they'll reflect that virtual environment, which is insane by itself. But okay, that can be excused cuz they have they have all the mapping, the 3D mapping yeah. for those virtual environments. They could just apply it and okay, good. What's well, nuts is you can take it out of the virtual environment into your real environment, and the white balance matches your real environment reflects. Like I, I had an Apple Watch Ultra in a living room that I was spinning, and there was a Roku TV with a Roku that purple Roku screen mm-hmm. saver that was reflecting off of the glass of the AR model of Apple Watch Ultra in real time. That's, My brain can't even nuts. fathom how that's happening. Your iPhone, like Quinn mentioned, when you take when you take a picture with your iPhone. It takes like 40 milliseconds just to process the photo. And this is all happening in real time from these cameras on Vision Pro. It makes no sense. It is. It is. I agree. Um, technically, is nuts. One thing you mentioned that kind of reminded me, I would love to see maybe in the next update for Vision OS, being able to have my phone render like my MacBook. Look at my phone, have it pop up. Mm. That takes care of a lot of the app limitations, I think. There's an app. You can download an app that can do that today. You can't. What is it? Called bezel, not as seamless at least. It's not a native look at it. Apps are there. I can, I right, can right, right. But I'm saying you can download this yeah. app, and then when you, whenever you power on your phone, it'll like hover your phone screen uh-huh. wherever you want it to be. All right. So one thing that I think people have uh, not realized, and that Apple's done a very poor job of with Vision Pro, is letting us find the apps. If you go into the yeah. app store. You see a good selection of apps that they've picked. And then you see a lot of apps that they say are optimized for iPad and iPhone and work great on Vision Pro. Mm -hmm. But there's hundreds of apps for Vision Pro that you will never see if you're just in the app store browsing around. You have to like know exactly what to Yeah, you got to find like a YouTube video of like best 25 best apps or something. Right. Or go to Reddit and find like apps people are talking about but i found so many cool things that you just won't come across can you tell me about some because that's something i haven't even like i've been so busy just exploring what it launched with that i haven't even really explored what you can download and i know sam mentioned to you black box did you get that one yet yes i do have black box yes try it yet yes it's very good okay so for those who don't know black box kind of it's almost like a mystery. It's a game. It's a puzzle that happens like in your AR 3D puzzle world game, yeah. that you don't really know what's going on. So you have to play it to kind of figure out what's happening. Super interesting. And it's the kind of thing that I feel like this is what Vision Pro was made for when it comes to games. Mm-hmm. Like, give me AR experiences. Mixed reality. Yes. Um, there's an app called A Bunch of Things. Okay. And so that you know how we- like, That sounds like we named it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> A bunch of things. <laughs> so you know how you, you found the Apple, um, their like AR playground mm-hmm. website, right? Well, this yeah. app is just a whole bunch of just random things you can bring into your real world. That's and really cool. They are they kind of look like they're made of Lego, so they're kind of pixelated, but it's like so many hundreds. hundreds it's a design things. choice? Yes. Okay. Hundreds of things. So you can put, you know, little sheep and put, put like pictures on your wall and uh-huh. put stuff all over the place. Very cool. 
There's another one called Art Authority Museum. And it puts like the most famous no. art no in way. the world. <laughs> and you step into a museum. And you, you, let me look at the Mona Lisa, like up close, right? Does it look real? It looks real. But the downside to this one is when you move around the museum, it like slides you from thing to thing and you get... That's the mm. only time I've been motion sick in Vision Pro is with this app. <laughs> they need to fix that. Have you wait? Okay, you're going on a you're going on a plane like yes. uh, this week, Tomorrow. right? Okay. I'm very curious about your experience because mm. I did get motion sick on a plane, even with travel mode. Yes, es well, especially with travel mode, it doesn't work the way. Uh, it doesn't work as solidly as I thought it was going to work. Okay, it's very much like struggling for tracking. Did you and enable like, it before the plane started moving? No. So that that's that that's a fair assessment. Okay. So I got yelled at. I was setting it up to put it in travel mode, uh, but then the flight attendant came up and told me to take it off because they didn't trust that I could see through it. And I don't, I mean my eyes are looking right at her. Like clearly I can see <laughs> right. you. Uh, but she yeah she didn't trust so. The, and she seemed like I wasn't the first person she had scolded. Wait a minute. Like this question. It sounds Hold like she, on. Go ahead. Are people allowed to sleep on planes? Because you can't see through your eyelids either. I, I, until Vision Pro, I was asleep before takeoff, dude. Uh, my plane, <laughs> my plane experiences always feels like I just teleported because I fall asleep <laughs> before awesome. takeoff and I wake up and the plane rams into the ground That's and incredible. lands. That's so weird. What, what a uh, weird rule. I've mastered that. Yeah, but it's it sounded like she was annoyed. Like there was a few people the past couple of days mm. that have been putting this on, and she was like another person. And so she she has me take it off, but I put I put it on uh, after we were in the air, and then I had but to turn travel mode on while moving 500 miles an hour was oh, quite the chore. I found if you if you are struggling if you get caught in a pickle, I found that the cheat is to look out the window mm. and try to open control center out the window and hurry up and turn travel mode on, or else it'll be like you know a state away by the time you right. even get that's, control that's center silly. open. Um, but yeah, I I watched uh, Apple TV, InVision Pro on a plane, and it do, it did a really good job of making me forget like that I was on a plane at all. Were you in an you can still, yeah, I was in the cinema, and then I went to Mount Hood, and it is weird like being somewhere else while feeling the plane still moving, mm -hmm. or especially mm -hmm. if you hit turbulence or something. But also. I, it, you might be right. It might be because I turned it on too late, but tracking while in the air was nowhere near as accurate as when you're stationary or on the ground. And like the environment was shifting ever so slightly the whole time. And that was making oh. me a little queasy. That doesn't sound fun. Yeah, it wasn't okay. as locked in as you hoped. So not only is, can you feel the plane moving, but the visuals in Vision Pro aren't moving the same way so like they're moving the opposite it feels like it's trying to compensate for the right. actual movement so it's just kind of constantly making you sick the whole time i wonder if during turbulent events it would be better to not be in an environment and just have the window in front of you yeah you you're gonna wear yours tomorrow right yes on the plane yes okay you got you have to text me like immediately and tell me if you have the same issues. okay very much because i just i want to i want to believe you're right because they're putting airplane ads and like that's one of the flagship features is that the travel mode uh and if it if that's the best it if that's as best that they got if that's how it actually works and mm. it's a little stuttery the whole time that's not uh i wouldn't i put the ads away for a little bit yeah because they, they don't have a beta label on travel mode they just no is, no right? and also travel mode is not the airplane button just so you know yes i i, <laughs> I understand because I, I, at mode. first i didn't know what the travel mode button was it's not clear enough right yeah, a lot of those aren't clear in there. Yeah. Um, all right, another one you should try. Castaway. Have you heard of Castaway? No, but it sounds great. All right, Castaway this is interesting. I was playing okay. my Xbox Series X in my Vision Pro on a gigantic screen thanks to Castaway. So you install Castaway on like Vision there? Pro. Minimal. It was fine. Like, I mean, I was playing Fortnite. Of, could you shoot a bunch of noobs? Yeah, I was playing Fortnite, so, you know. Okay. It was fine. Yeah. Um, so this requires a USB capture card. So basically okay. I plug the Xbox into the capture card and then USB-C that into the into an okay. iPad. So the iPad's running Castaway and then it sends wirelessly the video feed. So this would work Pro. for PS5 then too, right? Yeah, it work for anything that's HDMI. Okay. It can be a Switch, it can be, I don't know why you would, but your Blu-ray player, whatever. Ooh. Um, okay. It basically 
allow, so think of it this way. Castaway lets you plug HDMI into your Vision Pro, whatever, whatever okay. the HDMI is. So good. And then what was the other one? Oh, so there's Persona Studio, which lets you use your persona oh, and record it like it's a video feed. That's but there's yeah. also Persona Chat, which just connects you to another random person's persona. Ah, uh, nah, screw what that. What are those nope. websites? You know what I'm talking about, right? Like there's um, websites like Omega or whatever. Yes, yeah, so it's like Omega, but yeah. for your persona. <laughs> yeah, no, screw that. Nope, absolutely not. That sounds like the worst. Apple's not Apple's not putting that in their app store. Well, I feel like that that's like that's such a gamble for us because really the only people that have Vision Pro on launch are like people who, who would know exactly who we are. Right, <laughs> like, that's true. And just showing up and, and something like that is crazy. <laughs> uh, and then Sky uh, Guide, Sky Guide. So Sky Guide, okay. it puts you in an immersive environment. You choose if you want to be... I want to have a one one side tip about this. So you can be on the top of like a skyscraper. You can okay. be in the, oh, of the ocean. I got chills just thinking about. Or it. you can, but like like not like looking over. Just like you're on a rooftop, okay. looking at the sky. Or you can be like on I think white sands or something. Um, okay. And what it does is you look up and it maps the sky to your location, and okay. you look up and you can choose to just have it like connect the dots of the constellations as you're looking around. That's cool. Or it can overlay like the mythological creature that that mm -hmm. thing makes. Or you can turn that off and just look at the night sky. You can have meteor showers. Do you want it to be like a heavy meteor shower, a random meteor shower, meteor meteor shower? Yeah. It's very cool. It's very calm. You can have calm music playing. So you're basically just hanging out looking at the night sky in different yeah. environments. That's one thing I didn't expect. Like I can put this on and go to white sands at dusk you know where the sunset is just yeah. perfect and there's something about the visuals are incredible by themselves but there's something about how you lose the room you're in too yep and it sounds like you're there as well where i can actually sit there and my brain gets a little quieter which mm -hmm. i didn't anticipate like it can it convinces me that much where i feel like if i just had a stressful day i could see myself just going in there and just sitting Right. And and as if I was actually sitting, you know, in nature. That's what's crazy about this is okay, a question for you. Cause this is the only thing that breaks the illusion for me on a constant basis. I, I feel like I could talk about this for three hours, which See? I didn't expect. Uh but the actual lenses, mm -hmm. especially in like a dark environment when you're trying to mm. watch stuff. Like, for all the problems that they solved when it comes to v how VR and AR headsets work, like, that, the pancake lenses and seeing the glare through them, like, content, and for people that haven't experienced this or haven't touched a VR headset, I guess, this happens in all of them, where the lenses are, there's a curvature to the lenses, and there's there's layers to the lenses, so when you're watching certain content, let's say, in a dark environment, like, in, on Apple Vision Pro, the cinema, uh the bright content that you're watching will physically reflect off of the curvature of the lenses themselves physically. So it looks like they got smudged or something. And that is for all the problems that they solved with other, the physics of other VR headsets. This is one area where they also just became a victim of the same physics. And that breaks the illusion a lot for me. Do you have issues with that? Like if it weren't for that, this would be my number one way of watching content, I think, all the time. In private, by myself, I would always watch content this way. Yeah. But it becomes more of a thought now where I'm like, well, is the content suitable for those lenses in there? Will, it, will there be a bunch of glare or right. will it be a good experience? The way that I mitigate like that? that for me when watching, because for me, it only is a problem when watching video content. Um, the way that I mitigate that is I do an environment that's not dark. So I'll do Fair. like a, the daytime version of an environment because then it just eliminates that completely. But in real life, when you watch content, you probably prefer the lights off and stuff. Yeah, or I'll just not be in an environment. So like if I'm because it, you can use the where it like dims it. Yeah. In the background, Auto I'll just dimming. not. I'll just yeah. be in my living room and put like a giant screen up and watch that way, and it also mitigates. That's it. also wild, by the way. Auto oh, it, dimming it, where it can best. just it just dims your real world, yes. but you can still see it. That, so like, what? Cool. That's so cool. Do you know what I'm kind of upset about? I can see, like, pass-through in the Quest 3. Pa so, okay, pass-through in the Quest 3 is not better, but 
the blooming on digital products is less. So like when I'm on my Quest 3, I can look at my phone easier. Mm. And I didn't expect that for Vision Pro. I I don't know why, but like before Vision Pro, everyone was talking about how great the pass-through was. And so I don't know if I heard it somewhere. Maybe I just assumed it myself that I could have like a Mac screen in front of me or have my iPhone still be wearing Vision Pro and still be able to like do both. And that's really not the case. Like, it's hard to see my phone, the bloom, any display. There's some crazy bloom on all of these displays. So to to think that you can wear Vision Pro like a set of glasses and perfectly see through them and interact with the real world and a virtual environment, the software is set up for that. But I, it's much harder than I thought it was going to be to see my phone. Like, if I have to do anything on my phone, I have to lift Vision yep. Pro up off my eyes a little bit and then look at my phone. And also, just a minor thing that really upsets me, why doesn't Face ID work? Like, what? <laughs> no, listen, when you're by your Mac and you have an Apple Watch on, it just lets you in your Mac. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We don't even need your fingerprint. I know that it can't see my face because I have a headset on. But they know that too. So let me in anyway. My phone is right here. I'm signed into both, bro. You got to know that it's me. Open my phone. There's a, to have there to lift Vision setting. Pro off and then. Listen, there is a setting that you can tell it your iPhone to unlock when your Apple Watch is near. That's what I've enabled. But that's not a Vision Pro thing. No, I understand. That's but what... I'm saying when you're wearing Vision Pro, if you have your Apple Watch on, you mm -hmm. don't have to remove it anymore. Just I just feel like that should be a default thing. I agree. I I, I agree, but I wonder if it's because it literally can't see you. So, like, if you have Vision Pro on and you're It doesn't in need to see me. I have a physical thing that read know, my eyes here's already. What here's what I'm saying. You have Vision Pro on. You're in an environment. I grab your iPhone right next to you and swipe up. I'll take that chance. <laughs> <laughs> I will but you see what I'm saying. Yeah. It is, it is nice, though, that in apps, iPhone apps that you can use on Vision Pro that use face ID, optic ID works in their place. I did think that was mm -hmm. that was super nice. Um they they're way too quiet about optic ID. That's insane too. Agreed. Completely agreed. John, you mentioned you mentioned the MetaQuest. So the MetaQuest 3. Um yeah. Do you, and I, I don't think a lot of people are debating this. You hear it kind of talked about. Do you think Vision Pro is 7 times better than the MetaQuest 3? Is that that that's the price difference? Yes. Yes. Okay. But, okay. From a technological standpoint, yes, I can see all the ways it's seven times better. But I was visiting with family and I let them all try the Vision Pro. And the one thing Vision Pro did better than probably anything, and these people are spoiled because for a lot of them, Vision Pro was their very first VR, AR experience. Uh, they all were sold on mixed reality and especially VR. And, you know, they ask how much this is, and then they're immediately like, they just assume, okay, well, that's I'll just write that one off. Like, I really like that experience, but I'm not going to spend $4,000. And they all left. I, I convinced them all to leave wanting a Quest because I think a Quest, in terms of the experience, in terms of just letting you experience AR and VR, gets you more than 50% of the way there. Like, as a person that loves technology and understands how this works, I see how this is seven times better. But I don't know. I'm not convinced that you would hand it to someone and hand a Quest to someone and hand a Vision Pro to someone and then be able to justify spending seven times more. I think for the experience that these people want, that when their face lit up, when they finally got VR yeah. or AR, they can get that same type of feeling from using a quest three that it's more janky software definitely isn't great, but like you got to know that at, especially at this stage, Mark Zuckerberg and the whole team over there aren't sleeping and they're rewriting the entire UI UX for, for the quest to be more intuitive. And then, then that's when the conversation gets really interesting. I assumed that no matter what, this was basically going to kill the quest, but now that I have it, if anything, the Quest is even more part of the conversation now. And Mark Zuckerberg, I've been saying for a while, understands AR and VR more than maybe anybody, like where we're headed. And uh, he said something 
after Vision Pro came out, where he's like, I he sees the quest as like the android of this space. And I think that's true. Like I think they coexist and I think there's a, a path and a and an avenue for both of these products right now. But sooner rather than later, probably, these paths are gonna start to merge. Like the quest is gonna try to be more like the Vision Pro. The Vision Pro is gonna come down in cost, and then that's when I think we have a, a competition worry to think about. But right now, I think they both have their own spot. And for most people that don't want to spend four thousand dollars, you should buy a quest right now yeah. for five hundred dollars and you will not be disappointed. You know what's weird about this? As you were talking. Tell me. When you set up a quest, uh-huh. right? What happens as soon as you finish putting in your your name, you log into your Facebook and all that? What's the first thing it does? I don't remember. Oh, remember? there's like an intro, like a... An intro right. game. It, it gives you an introduction into what you are going to experience. Like it immediately product. is like, look, it, it sets the right. precedent of what this thing can do yes. instantly. When you set up Vision Pro, you log in and it just drops you on a home screen. Yes, but. And you don't know what to do. You don't know. Yes, sort of, but uh, this includes me, everyone that tried it, because, you know, the guest mode, every yeah. guest has to go through the setup too. Yeah. Even that alone was mind-blowing. Like, when it, when you look at something and it's like, yep, we know you're looking right here. That's insane. That's an insane demo by itself, that it knows where you're looking. The setup process for Vision Pro is like, it's not fun. It's not a game but it is technologically shocking it was upon impressive. setup immediately, yeah. But what I'm saying is, if you take both products and and have someone who's never used VR, AR, to mm-hmm. set each one of them up, it feels to me like Meta kind of gets you to understand what this is yes, that's better fair. than Apple does. Apple, mm-hmm. usually, in my opinion, is pretty good at giving you those training wheels to get you to yeah. Yeah. From point A to B and then let you take off from there. I almost feel that if you've used, I mean, I guess it makes sense for anything in the world, but if you've used the Meta Quest, you are a much better candidate for getting the most out of Vision Pro than someone who has not it's almost yeah. like facebook has designed the training wheels for this product that apple has made do you think that do you think that could likely be because there's no one blind buying a vision pro at four thousand dollars like i feel like by bu- blind buying a quest with no knowledge of what to expect from vr and ar for five hundred dollars is more likely than someone that doesn't that has never experienced it to buy a vision pro yes but there will be people who buy the vision pro who have never used vr Right. Yeah. And who didn't have an Apple store nearby to go do a demo. Like you had to drive like two hours to your Apple yeah. store. Yeah. Right. So there are people who are like, oh, new Apple product. I want to get this in. Try it out. This is exciting. They put it on. They're like, okay, what do I, what do, I do with it? Okay. Here's Safari. <laughs> yeah. What do I, what do I do with this? Yeah. And they don't. Would you say it? the Encounter Dinosaurs is like their equivalent to a demo? Yes. 100%. Yeah. But that's, that's what I showed everybody. That's just one. It doesn't load automatically though. Thing. You gotta like know to go can to I, it, right? I, which I wouldn't have known to go to if it weren't people like if it weren't for people like you getting that thirty minute demo and yeah. talking about it. So can I chime in on this? Um, this is a small sample size, and it's in my own perspective and point of view. But I have MetaQuest Three and the Vision Pro here, uh, and I have kids mm-hmm. uh, who are really yeah. eager to try both. Mm. Um, wanted to try. How both. did they know about the Apple one? Because yeah. I had it here. They wanted to know what it was, okay. and they probably heard their friends talk about so it. They didn't know, like, in advance. They weren't, like, anticipating. I mean, I think they knew it was coming, you know, because probably just from, from me talking about it. Yeah. I had them both here, set them both up on it, showed them how to use both, and kind of just let them try it. I was very curious what their perspective is. And they're younger. Um, both of them. Yesterday, we only let them use technology really on the weekends. Both of them asked me if they could play on the MetaQuest 3. Hmm. There's games. There's games there. It's an app thing. Yeah. There's, it's not even, it's like not even close. It, it's, yeah. That's why I prefer the Meta Quest. There's so many more games. I can do so much more. The Quest is so, is so much fun. Exactly. Um, and I'm sure, yes. If there's anything you can trust Apple with, it's getting developers. Like, if there's one thing you can count on Apple for, it's developers coming over. But the issue is you can't move two feet in the Vision Pro. I mean, that's true. Yeah. 
Um, Once you right. start moving, it takes you out of an environment, which automatically kills most games. I, I wonder if they'll offer that virtual sort of the walls like you get with the MetaQuest. So you did a really nice job of the Guardian. Guardian, creating your boundaries, and you poke your head through, and you that, can see the real that's world. That's actually one of the things I loved about this was that all the random, like, regular people in my family that tried this, uh, you know the typical VR headset trope where, like, people are running into walls or diving into their TVs or something? Yeah, yeah. I never had to worry about this with them. Like, like they would, they would be like, "Well, how do I know if I'm getting close to a wall or whatever?" And I, I was able to tell them, "Just, it's okay. Just trust it." Yeah. Which I can't say about the quest. I love that you don't have to set up a guardian on this. It, as soon as you get close to something, it would just start fading out your virtual environment. So it clearly knows, yeah. and I prefer that. I just wish that it would do it for on a larger scale. It clearly knows when I'm close to stuff. So, all right, let me explore some stuff then. If you're going to fade out, and I know to trust you that you're going to fade out if I get close to a wall or something, and it, like, fades out at a, subst at a substantial distance. Yeah. Like, you're not going to accidentally dive into something. Let me explore. Espe like, that has to be coming. That shouldn't be a thing that I have to wait for Gen 2 for. Like, that has to be a software Hopefully, update, yeah. especially as games start to come out for this. Not all games can just be done stationary. And then that gets us into the conversation where, and I'm sure you guys will most likely agree with this, I love the intuitive nature of how to interact with Vision Pro, but bro, we're going to need some controllers yep. for games. Like, when you're playing ping pong, I want to feel a tactile, a tactical, like, actual paddle in my hand. I want to feel, if you're playing a shooting game, I want to be able to feel like I'm loading a gun and have the buttons to actually interact with the game. There's so many there's so many avenues where controllers feeling something in your hand is important. Or like Walkabout Mini Golf is my favorite VR game ever. I want to feel I want to feel the golf club in my hand. I want to feel the putter. I feel you. I feel like that's a mistake. Um, you can't you can't launch you can't launch an accessory afterwards. It has to be in mm. the box for to get mass adoption. And since yeah. it's not in the box, you're always going to be developing for a subset which you don't know how many of these are sold, and Apple's not going to tell you. Do you think that's going to be more of an Apple Vision whatever, thing? Like, whatever a re a like the regular one? I feel like it has to be a future product. I don't, I don't think we're... Unless you're, unless you're good with using never, Xbox or, or never PlayStation controller. Same reason, I don't think Apple's ever going to do it. I'm, never? I don't think Apple's ever oh. going to do it. I think they're all in on hand. Why are you ruining my day? I think you'd be, if you want to, hook up a PlayStation controller, an Xbox controller. Yeah. But that's never going to see any from I don't think. Here's a bigger question. Here's a bigger question out of curiosity. Now that we've seen and use Apple Vision Pro, right? I think a lot of people are saying, I see the future. I see where this is going, whether it's the hardware, whether it's the software Vision OS, I see the future. I see where we're going. Mm -hmm. How does this change your opinion and expectations of future non-Vision products coming from Apple? Oh, I mean, I said I kind of care a lot less about them now. Is there something that, you know, I, a lot of people are saying iOS 18 is going to get the Vision Pro interface update. So everything's yeah. just going to be Windows Vista, apparently. But <laughs> that aside, like... Don't care see, if that happens, yeah. Seeing Vision Pro and seeing Vision OS, is there in your mind something they can do with iPhones, with iPads, with Macs, with Apple TV, et cetera, that I know it's kind of a very... It's a much bigger question, more philosophical, but is there something where you say, these things don't really excite me as much anymore? Is there something that you can see that could make them exciting based on what we're seeing with it? No. It's it's the whole added dimension. Like, this is going to change everything. Even simple things that you are used to, that you have seen for years be the exact same way for so long. Like, okay, uh... Websites have been around for a long time, yeah? Sure. And through the years, there's been all sorts of new design trends, new ways of navigation. We moved to mobile navigation, mobile computing. Again, just a design trend. Basically, since the beginning, though, all websites are the same. You can scroll up and down. With this, I don't think people even understand what that means for just regular... What web browsing right now when you look into vision pro everything sort of opens up in windows and that happens because up until today everything has been designed to scroll up and down 
But even websites, you're going to be able to navigate websites in a completely different dimension now. This changes everything about everything and how you interact with everything. And so once you, once the world starts moving into adding a whole other dimension to how you browse social media, websites, your life, it's really hard to go back to this glass rectangle where everything just has worked the same for for years and that's what's so interesting about like i already i already disagreed about like foldables being the future and all that other stuff i always said about foldables that's just the tech genre being bored and trying to trying to slow slow the rip of the bandaid because no, these these things were they're on their last legs in in my in my eyes anyway, and I we're we're doing Waffles? things to try yeah we're doing things to try to slow that down like, but we're just doing it in the wrong way. Oh, this the rectangle thing is boring, so now let's just fold them, which is technologically one of those things that's crazy. Yeah, we can fold displays, insane, but that is just slowing the process down for the inevitable future, which is we're not going to be in any of these things. This is like these. These are are limited by dimension. And that is something that Vision Pro, especially with the display quality, just really opens my eyes to where you could see stuff like that in the Quest as well. You know, you could browse and, and work in a different dimension. But this convinces you that it's real. Like on a FaceTime call, the tracking is absolutely perfect. Yeah. The the Gaussian blur behind the windows are absolutely perfect. The shadow on my floor in my real environment is absolutely perfect. And there are moments where this can trick you in ways that no other headset has ever done to me, where for a split second, my brain accepts it. And that's insane that that yeah. happens. My brain accepts that it's in the house. And that's not even talking about how, like, you can open up windows, leave your house... Do something else, come back, and they're all in the same spot. It makes no sense. And yeah, I just, I, I, my interest in iOS 18 and in phones is so, so low now because it just feels like I want to fast forward. Like I can see the future and everyone else is struggling to see the future and I just want to fast forward to prove it to them. And, but now I know I, ha I still have like, at least 10, 15 years left talking about this stuff where I feel like I'm wasting my time. So, Andrew, John, every time a front page tech episode goes up talking about iPhone 16, iPhone 17, iOS 18, know that I loathed the entire <laughs> process. Can I ask you a loathsome question then? Because I really want to know. You, oh, I'm you just going to ask me anything. Ask Are we getting a 16 Ultra this year? I think so. That's all I need. Ultra? Yeah. I think so? I think so, yeah. And are you excited for I, iOS 18 on the slab? How <laughs> excited are you for icons that are round? Let me tell you why I'm excited. For you know why I'm excited about iOS 18? Oh, do tell. Because I'm not necessarily excited about iOS 18. But I'm excited about the rumor of Apple adopting AI into their products. And we know that iOS doesn't just mean iOS. It means it's coming to the Mac. It's coming to the iPad. Yes. But that also means... It should be coming to Vision OS. Imagine wearing your headsets and having your mm -hmm, AI mm -hmm, personal mm -hmm, assistant mm -hmm, just mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. there. Not a sucky Siri version, but having yeah. an AI assistant in here, in whether it's in your view or however they're going to do this. That's actually what I'm most excited about. I guess yeah. I'm most excited about Vision OS. This too. is where this is where this where is where they differ, man. I am not giving Apple the benefit of the doubt that they're going to do any of this right. Maybe they will prove me wrong, and oh, oh we don't know. They can that's mess it up. not maybe fair. Prove, maybe, I mean, they might maybe not. They will prove but... me wrong. Siri's been so bad for so long. I don't. But disagree why has with she that. been bad, John? I mean, why has she been like, like because that? because uh, because there's a ground rule from the launch of Siri that it has to work on device. Sure. Everything has to be generated and decided on device. No other AI assistants are really doing that, and that limitation protects users and hurts Siri. I don't Indeed. know. Why are you giving well, why a thumbs the, up? Why the, is the that? Snapdragon happening? 8, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 can do generative AI on device. Yeah. 
on device. Okay, that's really cool. Um, have you seen that Apple has like been quietly buying up all of these AI companies? That's the actually the next episode of Front Page Tech because I refuse to make one about an they iPhone spent currently. Billions. They spent billions uh, on it. And I'm super I'm super pumped for that. Like I think uh ne- ne- how do you say is it Neele or Neelai right. from The Verge? Neelai? Bracelet guy. Bracelet guy, yeah. He said something that and our our boy Sam has really backtracked backtracked on his uh, thoughts on Vision Pro. And there's something that Neli said that Sam won't let go of, and it's like, well, will cameras and screens ever be good enough to convince people? And this is where this is where I I can clearly see two avenues happening. There's the future, in my mind, consists of two things. Mixed reality and AI. And right now they're sort of separated, but Soon, those avenues are going to start to merge, and that's where I think things are going to get crazy. So where the, let's imagine Vision Pro five years from now, the displays and cameras, the quality of those are are, are going to be, like you think Vision Pro 1 is good, displays and, and cameras on the, on the versions five years from now are going to be insane, but probably still not perfect. But at that point, AI will be at a level where it can sort of, fill the rest of the cup, if you will, where it can get us the rest of the way. So where we see things like, quote-unquote, motion blur or chromatic aberrations and stuff like that, like the the, the pitfalls of the f- physical nature of cameras and displays, I think will be solved by AI or something like EyeSight. Okay, right now the problem with EyeSight is it's probably loading perfectly fine, but because of the nature of the displays and the shape of the display, it's sort of pulling your eyes apart and down because that's the shape of the display. That's something that AI could come in and, and correct or, or like, you know, counter. And it can be done seamlessly and quietly. And I think that's where, I think that is where we really start to hit a major stride in terms of AR and VR because all of, it sounds like a bold statement and maybe I'm, maybe I'll, think of something else like after we're done recording of course but for me currently all of the downsides of the visuals of AR and VR can be corrected and compensated for with AI that is a very interesting take that I had not thought of oh I stumped Andrew Edwards for once no I'm not stumped I'm I'm just saying like that's it it makes a lot of sense the fact that you can use AI to fix a lot of the physics of light, physics of cameras yeah, on the inside, on the other side. I just never thought of that. I was like, this is something we're going to have to deal with for, for 15 years. It's not, they're not going to be able to fix camera and how, how physics work. What if they didn't have AI. to? Yeah. Right. I like that. My, my A lot of my family members, again, we keep saying this because we know the traits of cameras and displays, but none of my family members knew they were looking through cameras. They just assumed that they that they were seeing straight through it, and it didn't look perfect, but they were able to chalk those up in your in their heads like, oh, maybe it's the lenses or the yeah. shape of the thing that it. But in reality, it's none of those things. It is because it's a camera and display. But they didn't, they couldn't. That didn't even occur to them that they might be looking through cameras, which is nuts. That's nuts. I um, you guys read. I- I would love to be surprised by what Apple's going to do with AI. I would love, I would I, love to be well, surprised. Okay, can I ask you yeah, a question or sure. a couple? Just yeah. open up a can of worms here. Okay, so I was, I feel like you and I, John, are very similar, and especially before the launch of Vision Pro, where everyone was like, "This is the future. This is going to change everything." I was, I was very much like, "Well, hang on, let's, let's just settle yeah. down for a second. But now that you've used it. Are you blown away by anything? Are you? Have you? Yeah. Are you? Do you feel even more negative about it? Like, where do you actually? I don't sit feel negative about for it. For real, actually. I was actually blown away by a lot of things. Um, first, okay. the displays are unbelievable. We talked about that. The fact that it's rendering the world in real time is insane. Yeah. And what that cache must be to be able to sort of like quickly turn my head to the right and like surprise it and like it's there uh, um, yeah. is uh, unbelievable. I think the eye tracking. Is so much better than I expected it to be. With the, with, with, oh, it's perfect, with, the, with yeah. a few issues. I think trying to get like a YouTube video and to go full screen is still strange. Um, the eye tracking is surprisingly good. 
I was absolutely blown away by that. Mm. I expected that to be an incredibly janky experience. Yeah, and it can't afford to be. Yeah. That's the crazy thing. Like they had to get this absolutely right, the, the, or the whole the thing. Gestures, apart. I think, are unbelievable. It disappointed me, and what I expected to disappoint me was just the lack of a compelling reason to use this over something else. And I think that'll come with time. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if sports was there, I would be the first one jumping on Vision Pro that every sports fan should buy one of these things. I just don't see a mm -hmm. compelling thing that it does necessarily better than everything else. I know being able to edit things in a large screen is nice, but then you still have the headset on and you're, it's not as, as a seamless mm -hmm. experience, at least for me. Uh, it wasn't. And my face started to hurt weighing down as I was editing for <laughs> a long time. I think you have to change the way you want to work or do things to the Vision Pro. And that's why I said it's like an iPad. Same thing with the iPad. You can do all these things on iPad, mm -hmm. but you have to change what you're doing to suit the device. I think when Vision Pro, I don't have to change what I want to do to suit the device. When the device will change what it does to suit me, I think that's when you'll uh -huh. see this mass adoption. And I think Apple has a clear path to get there. I think what they've done is technologically one of the most impressive things I've seen probably in my lifetime. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't think as it stands right now, there's a compelling reason to tell people to go out and use it. What would... When you say the device, uh, like sort of, you want the device to sort of work with you instead of you having to like work around the device. What does that look like for you? Because we're coming from, we're coming from looking at a single display or multiple displays, whatever. But it's locked into a display with a keyboard and a mouse, and that's how we've done our quote unquote yeah. work forever. Whereas this is a completely new way of interacting with. With media, yes. with uh, and your environment as a whole, and ob obviously, going back to a keyboard and mouse, it, to me, it feels like we're backtracking. So, is it is there something that Apple could add with Vision yes. Pro where it feels like you? And absolutely. Okay, go ahead. First, of all, I don't think it's everything interacting differently. I can view a website in Vision Pro, but I'm still going up and down, right? I can look. Yeah, I can right. look at a picture, and I'm still going big or small, or, or viewing it on. On a grid. I could still watch a movie and it's still on a screen. It's just smaller. And I think actually mm -hmm. you touched on it when you were talking about gaming with something tactile. I was watching a video mm -hmm. and trying to get it to go to full screen it was such a frustrating experience. I kept staring at it, doing mm -hmm. staring at it and doing this. And it, and it wouldn't yeah. work. And I think, so I just watched it in a, a smaller window because that was how it was. And it's a yeah. small sample size. It's only been a week. But if there was an option to have something tangible at times when you want it to use... I think that would be incredible. Maybe that's a bridge, right? Maybe that's a bridge before mm -hmm. the eye tracking gets absolutely incredible and it, there, there's no need for something tangible. Um, I think Apple's trying to get people from A to C really quickly without forgetting that maybe there's still a step B in there. Mm, okay, yeah, that's fair. I think, I, for me, I, I'm shocked that it works because like the experience you're talking about, like trying to get a YouTube to go have full you tried screen. That? Like, that have had the same experience? Yes. And that is, but that's Vision Pro trying to interact with a website designed for a mouse and a keyboard, and it still somehow works pretty yeah. well. I think when, like, when YouTube puts out an app that is made more for how you interact with Vision Pro, it will be better. But like for me, eye tracking works perfectly all the time. I never to the point where sometimes I can't tell that something is highlighted, but I tap anyway because I just trust that it knows that I'm looking at it, and that always Same works. Experience. What doesn't always work for me is hand tracking. Like sometimes I get misfires there. Like I'll be on YouTube uh, trying to watch a video and I'll hit play and then I'll go to relax and put my hands down and it will read my hand as like, it'll think that I tried to pull the page down. It will refresh and start the whole video over and that's terrible. I hate that. But again, that's like, uh, I in an actual app, I, have you guys used Juno? Yep. That that experience is much better when trying to like actually watch YouTube videos. So I can only imagine YouTube's native app will be better. Uh, but yeah, that's the only thing that hardware wise, and maybe maybe that can be fixed with software. But a lot of it is hardware because like it does physics. It requires it to see your hands, you know. And then sometimes when there's low light or maybe you've got your hands too far to your side or something. You don't obviously you don't have to have it like way out in front of you like a lot of people assumed, yeah. but hand tracking for me is not nearly as accurate as eye tracking is. I am um, speaking of hand tracking. I gesticulate a lot when I talk. I use my hands, and so like I'm talking yeah, to somebody. Yeah, like, you do. Things are moving all over the screen. I'm, I'm yeah. zooming in. 
um, on stuff that I'm into. And I, I know I come across as maybe more negative than a lot of folks on Vision Pro because I think there's had a lot of praise on it. Um, and maybe I am old man yelling at cloud, but I do think the future is definitely I can see what it's going to be tangibly. Um, I would mm. just surprise Apple launched a product with, without the must have feature. Like if you're thinking, like, this is a reason to get it. It's an it's experiential, mm. right? You can experience these you've never experienced before, but there's not a one clear reason to, to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think yet, but I do think in like five months, it's a totally different discussion when these apps start to come out. And if people are on the fence about the killer feature, I trust Apple to get developers on board. And I think the developers mm -hmm. are going to sort of hold the keys for what Vision Pro is going to be. And you know developers will flock. This is 100%. Andrew was always of the mind that once I tried it, uh, you know, I, I would change my mind at least slightly. And I, I definitely changed my it. mind. I think you don't get it until you try it. Just you, you would yeah. get it. But what I didn't anticipate was I also thought, okay, what's the killer app going to be? You know, at first yeah. I thought maybe it's going to be spatial video, like, because that was one of their flagship features they showed at Dub Dub, which that is incredible. Like, I showed, uh, I showed my brother, who is, we're five years apart, but uh, when we were teenagers, or sorry, when I was a teenager, our parents passed away. So he was like 10, nine or 10. And he, now he has, you know, he has his own little family. He's got a kid and stuff. And, they were all over at the house. And when I was showing vision pro off, I didn't show, I showed maybe eight people in the same sitting. Like I had my own demo made up and I ran them through things like, you know, the setup and then Disney plus and the dinosaur encounter thing and, and all that other stuff. But I saved spatial video for him specifically. And I had him record it on vision pro. And I was not in the video. I, 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 I said, okay, Abby, can you bring Ashton? Abby is his girlfriend and, and Ashton is, is his kid. Can you bring Ashton and hold it up to him, you know, in, in, close to, in, in Vision Pro? And at first, he just thought he was recording a regular video. But when he played it back, and especially when, in, when he played it back and it opens in the window, he immediately it clicked what was happening. He was like, oh, what? And then he clicked the immersion thing, and then he was in the memory again. And he had to take it off. It was such an interesting moment because it was like in that split second. Due to emotion? Yeah, it was like, but it's not just I just recorded a memory with my with my current family. There were so many other thoughts rushing all at once that this one technological masterpiece created for him. And it was, you know, his life flashed before his eyes almost. It was like, man, if this would have, if we would have had this back then, because we don't have anything. We don't have like any voice recordings. Like I remember what my mom sounded like, but he doesn't. And it's just stuff like that. And this isn't just remembering what they sound like. This is being in the moment all over again to a very convincing degree. And what that meant, what that single moment meant was enough flo flood of emotions that he had to physically take the headset off and he was done. Because the implica the implications of that are just massive on on its own, and so that's a killer feature. But what I didn't expect, and obviously I love FaceTime. I would, if especially if someone else has Vision Pro, that is the best FaceTime experience you can have. Not on an iPhone. In fact, being on an iPhone like just sucks, and the latency is worse on an iPhone on FaceTime. And I think it's because. In reality, even though it's rendering like your persona, what all in reality it's really sending back and forth is a bunch of ones and zeros, and that's much faster than sending an actual video signal. And so latency is all is like near real life on FaceTime and Vision Pro. It's insane in the depth. It's a much better like that's a game changing experience. But what I didn't expect was that the killer there is no killer app. That's what I was waiting for. The killer app is Vision OS to me. Vision OS to me is the better OS. There's there are limitations. Like clearly, obviously, I can do more on my Mac, but it's you know, 25 years of fleshed out stuff. Vision OS, I I gravitate towards, and I want to do stuff in Vision OS, and that is enough to pull me in. Like I would rather, I would rather spend my day in Vision OS. And there's something about Vision OS that makes me feel the proper amount of connected and disconnected. And I, I keep trying to explain this and maybe maybe you guys can come up with better words for this, but when I'm when I want to do something in my phone, I have to open up this portal. 
And once my phone is unlocked, I'm now in it. And I can be sucked away by any app. And I, this is a choice now. I'm not looking at anything else. If I want to do anything on my phone, I'm looking into this little rectangle. Mm. On Vision OS, there's much more choice to be made. And so while, yes, technically my face is in this portal, I am looking in a portal again, I have, I have freedom of movement now. And I can look all the way around. I can open up a window and be on Safari and then go do something else and just and still see my real life and interact with real life or shoot a quick text, open my text messages up in my space, do my thing and then close it. And then I can continue on with life. And I feel like I have more control over how I'm connected. And that's the future. I A pair of glasses, a contact lens, whatever you got to do that makes Vision OS just a part of my day-to-day -day life is miles ahead of, of having to choose to open up your phone or my phone or whatever. And I wish I had a better way of translating that to people. If you haven't tried it, that, and unfortunately, I feel like that's not even something you can truly experience in a demo at a 30-minute 30, 30 demo in an Apple store because they're showing you all sorts of, like, all sorts of stuff. Where you where it really clicks is spending time in Vision OS, and I wish I was better at translating that to people, like how how game changing Vision OS is, and adding a completely separate dimension to how you interact with the media you think you you understand. You don't understand any of it anymore once you're in Vision OS. Even simple things like websites are going to change to a crazy degree. That right there. Literally right there is what I was trying to tell you on stage. Yeah, 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 dark, yeah, yeah. Genius Bar uh -huh. goes dark. That right there. Vision OS, when you get into Vision OS and experience that, that is where you see the shift. Not really about... Now, the apps have to come. They do. Yeah, but agreed. But that is the killer feature of it. If you, if you put it on and you understand what you're... I put it on, I was like, okay, I understand what's happening now. I see, I see the shift now. I get, mm -hmm. I don't need to open a specific app yet. I I see it now and I can't wait for other people to see this. Yes. That was it. And right if there. the hardware wasn't what it was, that wouldn't work. Like if I opened up a window and it was just kind of shaky in my environment, it's broken. The illusion is broken. It's those little, little couple seconds here and there where you're absolutely convinced that it's real and that's what's that's what's insane so i th i feel like andrew and i are pretty on the same page with vision os but why is it so hard to get an answer out of rettinger like i know you're looking for a specific app but what do you think about vision os like do you think that vision os is the future or do you see this just existing as well, like in, in let's say 15 years, are people still on their iPhones? And then also maybe some of us have uh, an Apple Vision product? We'll close it out on this one. Yeah, I do. Um, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I do think that's the direction Apple's going. Um, and it's a very simple, it's just a business reason. They may have this in, in innovative, credible operating system. Apple's here to make money. People will still be buying iPhones in 15 seconds. Um, and if there's... People that yeah. are willing to be paid for it, Apple's going to sell a product. We have iPad OS that got forked for really no apparent reason much at this point. Our OS is having to differentiate themselves. I think these will exist uh -huh. side by side for a very, very long time. Your point about the experience, I thought was that. I feels like Apple doesn't want that though. Like, did you see their airplane ad that they put out where they're like, they showed someone on an iPhone? Why? I hate that. It just, for audio listeners, it keeps like showing bubbles of thumbs up because it, it's reading my thumbs up in real life. Um, on this airplane ad, they show people on an iPhone and they're like, okay, yeah, that guy's, <laughs> he's just on a phone. Look at this. And they show vision pro and someone watching media on an airplane and vision pro. They kind of, to, for Andrew's sake, to use a pro wrestling term, it feels like they buried their flagship product instantly days after this one comes out. So it don't, it's like they're, they're telling us to our faces that, this is going to replace the iPhone, it feels like. I think it's a new flashy toy, and it's a new thing, and everybody already knows about an iPhone. It's like advertising for Kleenex. Like, you don't necessarily have to do it anymore, even though they, even though they <laughs> still do. Listen, I don't say, I'm not saying, I, guess, I, not saying like, I agree with it, but I do think we'll see both products exist side by side. And your point about the experience being a killer feature is interesting, because for some people, I can definitely see that. Um, revisiting mm -hmm. past memories, being able to sort of see 
things again that you couldn't before. I think that's incredible. I am curious, though, if your opinions hold true three or four months from now. Let's schedule. Yeah, I, would, I would love to do that. Your know, Vision Pro maybe gets four or five updates. Post WWDC, yeah. but I, I think let's schedule another one. Yeah, put yeah. me on the calendar I think now. Vision, yeah. Vision Pro gets some updates, right? Some of the issues get fixed. Less things show coming soon. Uh-huh. Maybe we get a sense of what Vision OS 2.0 is going to be. Are you still living in Vision Pro, or is it now easier mm. to just do some things in front of a computer and some things with Vision Pro? I'd be. I'm really curious. Yeah, like less resistance. Yeah. I'm real curious how that's going to be. And I think I might go the opposite way. I think I might find myself using Vision Pro more in a few months than I am uh-huh. right now. And that's what makes me that's what makes well, me Well, let's excited. schedule another let's schedule me for another episode in four months and another episode for fifteen years from Done. Now. <laughs> okay, perfect. Perfect. John Prosser. <laughs> but for now. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> thank you for thank joining you guys us. So we much. appreciate it as well. That's a good one. My f- my favorite podcast to be a guest on. Appreciate it, man. Oh, yo. Don't tell Mac rumors. <laughs>